so in this video lecture we'll be starting with this new uh, topic of unconformity now the definition of an unconformity is that an unconformity is defined as surface of erosion or non deposition occurring within a sequence of rocks this is one definition the second definition states that contact surface between sedimentary rocks of significantly different age and there is third one as well contact surface between sedimentary rocks and older eroded igneous or metamorphic rocks now looking at these definitions we we actually do not get the exact idea of unconformity so let us take this example we have a layer a and then we have a layer b and a layer c and over top of that we have layer d this sequence of a b c d which is happening uh, across the time of deposition is called as a conformable sequence now consider a case where the layer a is coming layer b is coming layer c is coming after layer c due to some cases the deposition stops happening okay so uh, after layer c the ideally layer d should have come but for some reason that deposition stopped happening and this deposition st uh, stopping is not for like 10 uh, 10 years 20 years or 30 years it is for millions of years so this is the history of our planet and uh, we can see here that at, at this period the earth has formed and it is almost 4600 million years ago so um, very few people know the history of the earth and uh, how trivial uh, the significance of humans is for this planet earth so we are actually there only from 65 million years ago and exactly uh, not even 65 millions because at 65 millions the mammals started coming so this is the evolution or evolution of our earth basically and how is it related to unconformity so i told you that the deposition stopped here and it it may be it may be it has stopped from one era to the other era so let us say that this deposition started in pre cambrian era and uh, a b c all all of them happened in pre cambrian era and because of something some uh, environmental changes because after every era that is pre cambrian to paleozoic to mesozoic and to cenozoic there is a, a lot of changes which happen in the, in the environment and as well as in the landforms and in the structural geology so because of that the deposition might have stopped since this was the surface uh, which was exposed to the environment since this was the last surface which was deposited it will be exposed to the environment and uh, it will get eroded so for that time for the time when the deposition did not happen this got eroded and then suddenly at some point maybe the deposition started again and then this layer d came so now you see that we have d b a c is missing and here we have d c b a here we have d b a so the c it went missing somewhere and this layer this would be called as an unconformable sequence so this is the most uh, basic and the easiest way what i have explained you this is much actually much complex than that as well but to understand it easily uh, this can be taken into consideration now thus in an unconformable sequence here there is considerable time gap in deposition of layer d due to any geological events which prevented any further deposition of layers till this time the layer c was exposed to erosion and it got eroded later on the deposition of the layer d was started again so this is what i explained you here uh, we can see uh, an example so here, this deposition was or uh, this this is not a deposition this is actually the igneous rock and it is pre cambrian igneous rock on top of that we have a tertiary conglomerate so this is sedimentary this is igneous and uh, this is this is happening in the tertiary zone which is where is tertiary here is tertiary 
and this happened in pre-cambrian era so it happened during this time and how to uh, measure the date in which it happened so i guess my my guess would be that it can be done by carbon dating but if you go in depth of uh, this geology then you might get into some other you might get some other methods as well which, uh, which using which we can date these rocks okay so in between is what we call as unconformity so uh, this this image what we are seeing it conforms with one of the definitions here so which definition this third one definition it is a contact surface between a sedimentary rock and older eroded igneous rock or metamorphic rock so that is why these three different definitions are given for unconformity and uh, this particular example was from the third definition now types of unconformity we have first angular unconformity it is characterized by different inclinations and structural features above and below surface of unconformity the sequence below the unconformity may be steeply inclined folded or faulted the sequence above unconformity line represents younger formation and may be gently inclined so you see as per this uh, definition what it is saying that the sequence below unconformity may be steeply inclined folded or faulted so here the unconformity is uh, this line and below that we have a steeply inclined uh, structural geology and it is carboniferous limestone this carboniferous is the era in which it formed so here is that carboniferous and on top of that we have the newly formed structure which is in the triassic era it is the triassic brescia so this these rocks are also are an example of unconformity next type is disconformity it is that type of unconformity in which the beds lying above and below the surface of unconformity are parallel they do not show any angular variation such type of unconformity is difficult to identify and is to be found out only by exploration or drilling a bore log so in the previous type we saw that uh, there was a clear demarcation because below the unconformity there was this angular variation but this type of disconformity is not going to show you any angular variation and hence it becomes much difficult to actually uh, gauge that whether it is an unconformity or not so here we have a sequence a b c then c got eroded uh, because the deposition stopped after c and then uh, because of this erosion what happened is these the the fine particles of this layer c were left on top because of the erosion erosion what what erosion will do it will create fine particles of the rock so these fine particles got left there and on top of this then layer d came so when the layer d came and if if you want to know that whether this is an unconformity you will have to drill a bore log a bore log something like this and if at this junction if you find something like this this is called as basal conglomerate so you see that these in between uh, there are some some fine particles so these fine particles represent that layer which got eroded so basal con presence of basal conglomerate is a strong evidence of unconformity and these are those bore logs which i was telling you so therefore basal conglomerates form a good identification criteria for unconformity in such layers because in such layers you cannot see any angular variations and all so we have to uh, go on go on for such drilling bore bore holes type of exploration non conformity it is that type of unconformity in which the rocks lying below the unconformity are older plutonic igneous rocks and those lying above the unconformity are younger sedimentary rocks so here if you see this is a line of unconformity and below is precambrian granite uh, and above is cambrian flathead sandstone 
so sandstone is obviously a sedimentary rock and granite gneiss and schist these are your igneous rocks so this is the non-conformity next is local unconformity so when an unconformity is traceable only in small area or in few rock formations of a given area it is termed as local conformity so this word local itself means that something it's not it's not widespread it's uh, limited to a certain area therefore it is called as local evidently it is due to changes in the condition of sedimentation in a very limited area of a major basin so if there are uh, if there are lots of rocks in a particular area and only if some some rocks have uh, uh, this uh, show this unconformity then we can say that it's a local unconformity S next is regional unconformity which is all opposite of local unconformity so when an unconformity is traceable over a large area extending for hundreds of kilometers it is conveniently called a regional conformity it is generally of angular conformity type and is of great significance in historical geology as it establishes the genetic relationship of rock of a wide area. So nothing much uh, to actually understand here. A regional unconformity is that it, it, is, uh, it extends to uh, hundreds of kilometers and for, uh, for a wide range of rocks. Yeah, so in Indian geology we have unconformity uh, of uh, these three regional unconformities and first is the eparchian unconformity second is the post windian unconformity and the third is the paleo paleozoic unconformity now detection of unconformities how do we detect whether an unconformity is there or not so first is obviously the angular relation because uh, this is the most visually we can uh, say that okay there is an unconformity here so when layers of rocks either above or below the unconformity are not parallel or have different inclinations angles then it is indicated an unconformity so here as you can see uh, there is an angular variation next again uh, this i had explained you the basal conglomerates so presence of basal conglomerates indicated an unconformity at the base of the layer of overlying rocks so uh, yeah and why it is called as basal conglomerate because it is the present at the base of that overlying rock so if this was a and then this was b and then the, there is this small layer c and on top of that we have d so this basal conglomerate will be present here right at the base of d residual soil residual soil is product of weathering which acts on the top exposed surface of the sedimentary rock after the gap in geological timeline the new layer of sediments is formed over this hence presence of residual soil is also an indication of unconformity so residual soil is also same uh, uh, like this basal conglomerate but just that it is very finely it is a product of weathering so it is very fine and it is almost like a soil which uh, which is remaining below that uh, top below the top layer yeah so this was it for today's lecture and uh, in the next lecture we'll be starting with a new model till then take care thank you